I just want to talk about um, characters, and then I promise I'm going to shut up. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <so>. keep talking. <laughs> Um, like I had mentioned before, characters are called Bizlai. That is because uh, the, the guardian, the patron of the Invisible Sun is an entity called Vizsla, and they all sort of revere her. And um, if you have played the Cypher system, uh, some of the mechanics in Invisible Sun are gonna seem very familiar to you, and that's because it's not, while it's not a Cypher system game, it is a game that is designed with the, some of the same spirit. So for example, when you create your characters, you're gonna be creating a sentence, just like in Cypher System, except it's a different sentence. In fact, that, that sentence is going to be, I am a blank blank of the order of blank who can blank, right? Um, and so each one of those parts of that sentence, uh, you're gonna fill in from a number of different choices, and those choices figure in uh, your background. Your background is going to be, play a really big part in this, and part of your background, for example, is where you live. Because all Vizlai, with a few exceptions, have their own house. And the house of a Vizlai is filled with secrets. And so everyone's got a different house, and some, you know, Bruce's house might be haunted, but Dennis's house might have secret rooms that only he is just now discovering. And, and so your house actually is a part of your character that develops with your character. You can use the, the points that you get in the game to uh, you know, enhance or, or unlock things in your house just like you are doing with your character. Um, and there is, um, so you know, we've got the, oh, and I wanted to mention too, uh, there's a whole <laughs> way that the, the first session of every Invisible Sun campaign starts out with a very special session where everyone brings their almost finished characters, but there are certain aspects of your character that you decide, you, you develop with sort of a, a subsystem as a group. So you might decide what and build what your house is like, but when you sit down at the game table, everyone is gonna help you and contribute to designing the neighborhood that your house lives in, and who lives next door, and you know, do they like you, do they not like you, and, uh, and so it becomes, uh, there's, a, there's a portion of character creation that is actually a group activity. Um, you can you talk about the campaign? What's that? Can you talk about the directed campaign? Yeah, let's talk about the directed campaign. So uh, lastly, I think I've said that three times now. Um, so uh, in the Kickstarter, uh, one of the levels that we're gonna have is call, uh, uh, offer something that we're calling the directed campaign. Here's the way the directed campaign works. Um, you know, because you, uh, you know, this is, this is a challenging setting, right? There's, this is, this is weird. How do you, how do you, where do you go? How do you manage this? What sort of adventures do you run? The directed campaign, you tell us when your campaign starts, right? Oh, it's going to start in February. And so in February, on a monthly basis, if you, uh, have access to the directed campaign, you will have access to a website. That will not only have um, you know, ways for you to interact with other players and whatnot, but it will have, on a monthly basis, a new uh, offering there that will be ideas and adventures and, and directions that you want your campaign to go. And in fact, you will, it will be based on um, what happens in your campaign. So we'll be asking you questions. Did your characters do this or did they do that? And if they do this, then you'll get something else in March. Uh, or if they did that, you'll get the other option in March, right? And so it will follow your campaign as you go along, providing these things. And that's not all, actually. The directed campaign will, uh, some of the things that you'll be getting will be physical things that we will send in the mail. There'll be cool props and things that you can actually introduce into your game, because um, I like stuff, right? <laughs> um, and lastly, if, you, if your players are willing, uh, and you give us your players' addresses, we'll send them stuff that they will get. You know, uh, you know they'll. You know, maybe maybe if you've identified one of your players as being, you know, the the person who likes to really join things and whatnot in the game and get involved, right? They'll suddenly get a mysterious thing in the mail that is an invitation to join a secret society that exists within Invisible uh, Sun, right? And so, um, <laughs> so, the thing is that, that really, you know, uh, 
uh, enhance the game, really invest the players in the game. I think it'll be uh, really fun. You know, and how cool is it? You know, if your player shows up at the next session and just says, uh, "I got this invitation in the mail. What do I?" You know, uh, I think that'll be really, really fun. All right, uh, that is my my long-winded but actually extremely brief uh, uh, overview of Invisible Sun. Um, okay, there's a lot to this game. There's a lot in that cube. Um, so let's uh, let's take a few questions, and then um, we're gonna turn things over to all the other cool stuff that MCG is doing. Charles, do you wanna uh, pick up some? I'll, I'll do the answering, and you do the random. Okay. Uh, we, we actually have a little card that people write questions on, and we can just oh. read them, so we screwed up on it. <laughs> all right. So all right. right. I'm gonna start right back there. Yes, sir. We are still working that out, but uh, I am, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a deluxe game. Um, you know, it, I, did a, I did a product 10 years, it's been 10 years now, called Tolus. Tolus was a big, huge, deluxe book. It was $120. This is bigger and more deluxe than that. Uh, so it, it, is, it is not going to have an inexpensive price point. But we're still working out those, those exact details. But I will say this, numbers are important in the world of Invisible Sun, so whatever the final price is, we'll prob that in and of itself probably will, will probably have some, or something. <laughs> something significant. Yeah. Yeah. Can the game be played in more of a traditional, regular DD with the uh, Ab group versus... Absolutely, absolutely, right? The, the one mode of play is only one of the three regular <laughs> modes of play, right? You'll You'll still be, you know, sitting down at the table, you know, and, and playing the game and, you know, running through combats or interactions or whatever it is, just like you would any other game. Anyone here? Yeah. Oh. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the, you said it's not a Cypher System game? It is not. So, uh, but it's Cypher System adjacent, I guess. Um, sure. The, the Cypher System has a very good core mechanic for resolution that permeates the entire game. Does this use the same core mechanic, or is it a different core mechanic? It is a different but similar core mechanic. Um, and the reason for that is with Invisible Sun, I wanted to create a system that really spoke to the world of Invisible Sun. This is unlike the Cypher system, right? When I was designing Numenera, I knew, or I thought, I hoped, that, that this would be a, a system that we could use with lots of different genres and could do a lot of different things with it. That is not true of Invisible Sun. It is very tailored to the setting. And so here, so just to give you a brief idea, um, Invisible Sun uses 10-sided dice. If you are doing just some normal action, right, you're, you're picking a lock, you're just gonna be rolling a 10-sided die, the game master's gonna assign a difficulty. Um, you, you'll be able to lower that difficulty, potentially kind of cipher-like. But here's the thing, if you use magic, to enhance or help you open that lock. Now you're gonna be rolling one, uh, the, the normal sort of what we're calling the mundane die, but then also a magic die, right? And now you'll have two opportunities to get that, that number that you needed, right? You might be able to finagle two different sort of magical things, right? And now you're rolling three dice to see if you can get the target number. However, if the thing that you are doing, let's say that lock, is um, it has a magical ward over it. Well, that lock might require two successes. And so if you're you only using the mundane die, you can't open it, right? You can't get two successes on one die. So it suddenly becomes a system where you have to use magic to deal with magic. And that I mean, there's a lot more to it than that, obviously, but that is sort of the, the core mechanic. Okay, thank you. Let's go over here. Uh, I have three very different <laughs> uh, first, uh, do you have a relationship already with a software company to build out the app and the website, or are you sending out RFPs, or how is that development process going? Uh, that is we in are the process. In the middle of that. Yes. Between those two, those two possible answers you gave. Okay, cool. That was short, so I'm asking another one. Okay. <laughs> sure. Uh, a big one. <laughs> so, uh, I love the Cypher system, and I love how excited you are about this. The reason I love the Cypher system is there's no homework at all. I used to play a lot of third edition, uh, but it took forever to level characters and preparing a new adventure took like a week. 
weekend, maybe I was a bad GM, but now I have kids, I don't have time for any homework. So this third mode of play, I know people who are gonna love it, for me that's a turn off. So what if yes. I don't wanna participate in then, then offline activities away from the gaming table? How's that gonna affect my experience in the game? Uh, then it will play like a, a RPG that you are used to, and uh, you you won't there won't be any you, there won't be any loss. You just won't gain. Okay. The third question, since that was short too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I think it was up front, at least. I'm, yeah. Uh, when you start talking about the shadow versus the actuality, I was immediately reminded of the forthcoming book into the outside. Do you guys expect any kind of crossover material in that? Um, not really, but we're going to talk about Into the Outside and how amazing and cool it is. Great. Thank you for <laughs> I uh, seize the rest of my time to think about it. I just have a question. Is, as far as the whole like, app interface and all that goes, uh, is that going to have a web interface? Or which OS will that work on? Is it going to be like only Apple, Apple, Android, Windows? Uh, I, I believe what we're working on right now is uh, a web interface. Okay. So it should work. Our, our most likely course of action is a web app, so you can put it onto any platform. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Right. Red shirt. Um, do you guys plan to provide a sort of list of suggested reading materials for the site? Sort of wrap our heads around. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes. Basically, um, well, I mean, I have it. I just don't have it with me at the moment. Um, that that would be a great thing for for us to, to post as we're uh, promoting leading up to the game. But I would say anything, you know, like uh, Grant Morrison's. Well, anything that Grant Morrison did. Um, but you know, Doom Patrol comes to mind. Uh, the Invisibles comes to mind. Um, uh, you know, the work of of China Mayville comes to mind. Um, uh, Philip K. Dick, you know, sometimes I uh, jokingly have referred to Invisible Sun as uh, the Harry Potter books if they were written by Philip K. Dick. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Much different series. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take you right there. Yep. Um, I'm a big fan of the cereal myself, but I usually have trouble bringing in games, uh, especially if there is some sort of story point mechanic where the players can suddenly throw stuff. Yes. Um, so the story mechanic, uh, story point mechanic, is not uh, a way for players to affect the narrative. Um, it's actually a way for the players to measure how the narrative is affecting them. Um, you know, so uh, everyone, based on the choices that they make, and uh, both at character creation and ongoing, will have uh, different things that they're trying to do. Because the idea is is that every character has an arc, right? There aren't. Uh, in Invisible Sun, there aren't levels, there aren't tiers, um, there are story arcs. And so if you reach the midpoint of your story arc, that tells you something about the character and unlocks certain abilities. If you're nearing the end of your story arc, that does other things, right? Everything is very, very story-based. Um, but the thing that will sort of keep and help manage the, the surrealness is that Sooth deck that we talked about. Um, where those cards are overturned, um, they will uh, have meanings associated with them that will help you uh, come up with, with, with cool ideas that will help generate ideas right there on the spot in the middle of the game that will help keep things sort of in the spirit of the game. And I'm here. Thank you. All right. Uh, one thing, like watching the video, which was completely off, but um, like you're looking at the shadow and the actuality. Um, do they do they merge? Do they overlap? Are they completely separate? What's that delineation like? Are you going to have a modern day game? <coughs> the ability to no transcend or uh, the game um, starts out with because there's a lot of games out there. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of settings where you know we sort of learn that there is more to the world and we sort of kind of are interacting with both and so I decided to go a completely different way. Uh, the game starts out with player characters already in the actuality. You are already there, you are a Vizla, you've got your house, um, you, you are sort of immersed in the world already. 
Shadow is a place, it, it is in fact one of the eight suns on the path. Uh, it is the gray sun. Uh, that's right here, right? That is correct. That yeah. is actuality. Well, all, it's all the actuality. That's indigo. Oh, sorry, that's, indigo where, right. that's where your characters will spend most of their time is indigo. Um, the, uh, uh, so here's, here's how Shadow, you can, you can have an adventure where you go to Shadow and visit it, but that is not the main uh, uh, focus of the game. In fact, here's the main way we use Shadow in the game. So uh, all the characters are, are people like, like you and I, right, who have lived in Shadow and thought that it was the real world, right, bought into the lie that Shadow is, and, and think that, you know, that they're accountants and, and store clerks and whatever, but have learned the truth and escaped shadow and, uh, uh, you know, live, now live in the actuality. But, you know, they lived so long in shadow and the shadow was so, they, the illusion of shadow was so convincing that sometimes we feel the pull back to shadow. So if we're all playing a game and we're showing up on Friday night to play, but Bruce can't make it. Uh, even though we are right in the middle of the action, right? We stopped at a big cliffhanger last week. Bruce can't make it this Friday. Oh, Bruce got pulled back into shadow. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Bruce, can, Bruce can come back at any time, but uh, it, it is just a handy little meta tool so that you can sort of make sense of that narrative when a player can't show. Is it something that happens to exile to lives? Sometimes they just disappear back into shadow for a while and then they come back. Exactly. We probably should take like maybe one more. Yeah, I think we have one more and then we can move on to some other things here. Yeah. Mark? So uh, is there a GM intrusion type mechanic? There is. Um, it, it's, uh, they're called complications. Um, and uh, most of them come as, actually almost all of them come as the result of something that happens with magic. And so here's what happens, right? Um, I'm rolling my, my mundane die, and uh, the mundane die is numbered zero to nine. Zero is always a failure, but it's just a failure. I pick up, and now I'm using a spell to help me in whatever it is I'm doing, or I'm, or I'm casting a spell or whatever. I'm using the mundane die and a magic die. The magic die has a special symbol on it rather than a zero, and it, uh, it triggers a complication. But what if I'm casting a spell where I'm using two magic dice, right? <laughs> oh, I will two complicate, right? They, it magnifies, right? And they get worse and worse and worse. The game master can also, uh, based on the cards, um, and you know, at the point in the story, just like in the cipher system, can introduce a complication. Uh, they work a little bit differently. Uh, the rewards or the, the way they impact like the experience points and stuff is different, but the, the spirit is the same. <laughs> All right. You, let me yeah, kind of yeah. talk a little bit about what they got. Oh yeah, yeah great, great idea. Yeah. So everybody, we got a nice little t-shirt, um, a magnitude, and a nice little uh, uh, dude has a t-shirt. If you haven't had a chance to look up, they have t-shirts too. Um, you also all got one of these guys here. Uh, if you've been to our seminars before, you might recognize this. We always do this every year. Take this back to our booth, you'll get a stamp, and the card is yours to keep. When you get the stamp, you'll collect a, a, a gift that we have for you. In the past, we've done a variety of things. Uh, we've done, you know, uh, we did a Cypher System bag last year. Uh, we had a $25 coupon one year. So we've done various things like this. This one's a little bit different. You're going to pick up an envelope that contains a secret. Don't open it until 15th of August. Open it on the 15th of August, do what it says. And then if you're part of the Kickstarter, in any way, shape, or form, even if you don't, you don't give a rat's ass about any of this stuff, this just isn't for you, whatever, just back us for a dollar and we will have something secret and cool for you that other backers will not have access to. That's... Yeah, yeah. that's...